Hey YouTube, how you doing? Kevin here. Alright, so I got another video for you. Um, and tonight we're going to be talking about pistons and stuff like that. But before we talk about pistons, um, I wanted to show you guys what I found. Okay, so you know the intake and I've been messing around with carburetors and trying to figure out a carburetor to fit on my, uh, on my motor. And I decided I'm going to bore out the bigger one and, and match port it and get that all done and I adjust it up. I'm keeping the factory carburetor, but a lot of you guys like to mess around with aftermarket carbs and um, trying different modifications to get different carburetors to work on your bikes. That's all cool. So I'm just going to give you guys, I'm going to put a little bug in your ear, a little tip, and something I found. This is an intake port right here, an intake boot I mean, for the, uh, the DS80, um, which is Suzuki. And I want to show you guys this. This is really cool. Take it like this. Okay, flip it backwards. It fits right on the intake, and you can put the screwdriver through the hole and tighten up the clamp on it, and then you can mount your square flange, and you have a little bit of room to, to work on. So I just wanted to throw that at you guys real quick, show you that, and um, that's pretty much it for that part of it. Okay, so now the purpose of my video, okay? I have a lot of people talking about bikes burning up. Um, what what happens if I run the bike too lean? Um, what happens if I use the wrong oils? What happens if um, I I just run the hell out of the bike? All right, and what happens if I run it with an air leak? So, first thing I want to show you guys is this piston right here. This piston right here is pitted right here. The ring lines are all burnt up. See right there? How, how torn up it is? That's one for that, buddy. How, how uh, melted it is. This bike right here was ran way too lean for way too long and until it died. Okay, so that right there is what happens when a piston gets to the boiling point where the metal is actually starting to uh, molt. Okay, it'll start to molt. Um, Incorrect heat range on the spark plug will do this. Incorrect, uh, what do you call it there? What do you call it there? If, it, if your bike is running too lean, that right there will do it. And uh, let's see if I have any other information on that. Uh, let's see. Okay. A foreign object in the uh, cylinder will do that. And uh, what do you call it there? Too lean. On the skirt and crown. So, basically, if um, some of your coating came off, or you you had like crap come through the carburetor, like if you were in an area that had like a lot of dust and dirt, um, and you didn't have your seal, your your side cover properly sealed, dirt can get in and do that to that. That right there is a, a common problem with that. So that right there could be rock, it could be overheated, it could do. Um, we call it. it'll melt, it'll molt like that. This right here was running way too hot. The cylinder to this thing was horrific. I wish I kept it to show you. Then you have this one right here with the with the burn mark on the side. Okay, that's the oil getting past the rings, and that is improper oil. You can see how it's just it's just ash, too much ash on the thing, and then the piston rings stick, and then the uh, it, so you get that's blow by. Is what you see in there. You're seeing the exhaust going past the rings. Um, Whoop cylinder can do that. Um, there's all kinds of different uh, things that can do that. But the most common one is incorrect oil. Possible cause. Lack of lubrication. Poor grade oil can cause that. So that right there is a lack of lubrication and or poor oil. Poor quality oil will do that. So you have to watch your ash deposits. That's what it's called, ash deposits on your oil. And um, you want to use a good quality oil. You don't want to use the cheap stuff. Remember, if it's cheap, it's cheap for a reason. It's probably missing the, um, the chemicals needed to prevent that. So that right there is bad oil right there. And it's been ran like that for way too long. And then you have this. This actually right here, it, where I broke the ring land, 
was running too lean and started to burn up. Okay, that's in the, you might notice the common um, denominator here is lean. A lot of these things are because they're running too lean. So, an ash on top of the piston excessively can be too rich. A too rich condition can give you a lot of ash on the top. And then the engine will start to what they call diesel because this right here starts to, when it gets to a certain point, it'll start to absorb fuel into it and then it have pre-ignition they call it. And that can also cause that. Pre-ignition can cause a knock or those sort of things. So you guys want to make sure you adjust your, um, what do you call it there? Make sure your carburetor is properly adjusted and it's not running too lean. Also too, leaky gaskets and seals can cause a lean condition. Crankshaft seals can cause a lean condition. Head gasket can cause a lean um, condition. A, um, what do you call it there? A jug gasket can cause a lean um, condition. So, um, your carburetor not screwed down tightly can cause a lean condition. Not having the plugs in here in the air box and sucking excessive air can cause a lean condition. So there's a lot that can cause a lean condition. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is the cylinder on this bad boy. Look at how bad this thing is. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let's see if I can expand you up there. You guys can see how bad it is in that cylinder. Right there, see the scoring? It actually chewed it right, right up. I mean, look at that. Even the exhaust, I don't know if you guys can... Um, no, you can't see it with that. Okay, I tried. Oh yeah, you can see it now. See the exhaust port at the bottom? I'm going to put my finger up through there. Let me see if I can find it here first. Put it like this. Right there, you can see where it, where the ring actually just drove right into it. And that's, that's seizure right there. See how deep those are? That's pretty bad. So... Those right there are, are common problems with a lean condition. Um, so you don't want to make your engine run too lean. You don't want to make it too run too rich. So you kind of want to go by the specifications. Um, I find a lot of these problems happen after people reject the carburetor. And because they're not doing it properly. So we're going to get into that at another time about how to check it. But I want to tell you guys one of the most common reasons why an engine overheats. And when you see this, you're going to be looking at your bike going, oh crap. The most common problem with these bikes overheating is dirt buildup. Now, I want, uh, I'm going to put this in a language that a lot of people who aren't mechanics understand. Okay. If you take the side off your computer at home and you have your heat sink... Hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. Here's a heat sink for our computer. These are the coolant fins, okay? Now what happens is, in some cases, dirt and dust will build up inside here. The fan actually sucks, you know, blows out the, uh, the heat, but, um, these fins are here will start to fill up with, with um, dust and dirt and soot. What happens is it overheats the processor and then the computer starts to run cool, uh, run hotter and then overheats and shuts down on you. Okay, keep that in mind. That's on a PC. Now, that same thing happens when you don't clean your cylinder. You want to make sure that these cooling fins are nice and clean. And when you have thick, this stuff that's on here so thick, you can't even break it off with your finger. I can go up and down this dirt, and look, nothing's coming off. Okay. That's actually so, that dirt there got so hot that it actually melted it on, melted the dirt to it. It's crazy. I mean, it's just, it's, look how hot, look how crusty it looks. The dirt actually melted to the cylinder. Okay. The sides are fine, but the back is not, and the front is not, right up in there. So you want to make sure that your cylinder is clean. Now the way it works is the piston goes up and down in the cylinder so fast that it creates friction. The friction creates heat, 
and the heat gets dispersed over all these cooling fins. Okay, that's how it works. So the heat from your cylinder radiates out, disperses out, and it tries to go to the edge. Its goal is to go to the edge of the get to the edge of the cooling fins. Okay, when it goes to the edge, when the heat starts to radiate out. The cold air that when you're riding your bike goes through these cooling fins, goes through them, and cools the engine down. Hence, air cooled. That's how it works. Now, a couple of things contribute to an overheating engine. One, a leaky gasket where it's sucking air and becoming lean. Incorrect heat range on your spark plug. The wrong type of spark plug can do it. Um, so you want to make sure you get that. And also, in some cases, bad oil. If your oil that's in your, um, what do you call it there, your reservoir, is the wrong um, oil, then it's going to build up ash, like the ash deposits, and it's going to look like that, and it's going to start to overheat. And as it overheats, see the shiny spot right there? It changes the shape from circular to more of an oval shape. And then it wears into your cylinder even more, basically slowly destroying your engine. When you hear people say oil is oil, yeah, that's fine for a car, but not for a dirt bike. So I'm going to recommend a high quality oil with low ash deposits so that you can do that. Now, if you go to your barn and you find an old metal can and it says like 100 to 1 ratio and you know it's got it, it has like a high ash co content you don't want to use that in this um this takes regular two stroke dirt bike motor oil not or not the two stroke oil for a chainsaw and not the two stroke oil for a boat so there's a couple of other things i want to tell you there is different types of oils there is mixed oil that you dump in with your fuel and then there is two-stroke oil for um, oil injections, oil injection systems. You want to make sure that you get the two-stroke air-cooled oil injection system. You might have to hunt around a little bit for it. Um, but they do make it, and it works pretty darn well. If you use the oil that you mix in your engine, well, you know, with your fuel, you could have issues with it. So get a good quality oil. Make sure it's the type that goes for the oil injection air cooled. Liquid cooled oils, it'll tell you right on liquid cooled oil. If you go to the gas station, they normally typically have marine oil. You don't want to use those in this. They're a totally different animal and require different things. Liquid cooled engines run cooler than hot um, air cooled engines. Air cooled are obviously hotter and require a different type of oil and different type of maintenance. So when you get your bike back from the pit, well, after it's cooled off, you want to hose down your, your cylinder here and make sure that there's no crap in it to build up. Also, make sure you run the good quality motor oil in your um, oil reservoir so you don't get this. This is basically from high ash content. You can see the top of it. It's all really thick carbon. I mean, it's thick. I could scrape that off with a screwdriver. I'll show you. Just taking a screwdriver. You can see how thick that is. That. That's high ash right there. We don't want that. Low ash. You want to make sure that, um, what do you call it there? You don't want it too lean because you don't want that to happen. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's, there's a chart online you can get um, that will show you all the different pistons and, and their problems and what the cause is. Remember, if this happens to you, or is it, if that happens to you, there's a reason for it. If this happens to you, there is a reason for it. If this happens to you, there is a reason for it. Your job before you just take and go, oh, my piston's bad, throw it out and grab another piston and throw it in. You want to find out what your problem is prior to running the motor. Is it because you got you caked up with dirt and it overheated? Is it because you got the incorrect heat range on the spark plug? Maybe you should try a cooler plug. Um, maybe you should try readjusting the carburetor. Maybe you should check your exhaust. That's the other thing. It's a lot of um, this right here could also be from a clogged exhaust. I've seen that too happen. Um, it's rare, 
but the, I'm going to be doing a video on cleaning the exhaust tips um, because that's another problem that a lot of people with older bikes are dealing with right now is the back um, plug for the um, I'll see if I have it The exhaust tip on the back uh, fills up a carbon and that can also cause you to overheat so you want to make sure if you have an overheat condition it's not your tailpipe plugged up because these do plug up with soot and crap and I'm going to show you guys how to change clean these out on another video but basically at the bottom of your, and this is this is my expansion chamber that I'm using on my bike but the KE's and the KD's and the KM's and all those have the same thing. There's actually a procedure to clean that. Um, but you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not too well. But there's a lot of crap in this uh, this muffler. And that right there fills up. And as it fills up, your hole goes from here and just slowly quenches. And then until you only, your exhaust can only pass through a small hole. That restriction backs up to the motor and causes stuff like that. Um, really doesn't cause it. It doesn't really make a lean condition, but it makes it overheat and could result in that. Um, it, it will not result in that. This is this is a lean condition. But you want to make sure that that's cleaned out because overheating will destroy a motor. Slowly or fast, depending upon how bad and severe the condition is. So guys, check your bikes make sure your bikes are clean make sure your exhaust is not plugged that's two make sure you got the right spark plug in there the right heat range and it's properly gapped and make sure there's no leaks and how can you tell if you have an air leak well oftentimes the bike will run away on you like when you when you start the bike up and it's idling it'll be like racing and you let off the throttle and the thing is still like really high in the rpms and then you turn the knob on the carburetor to, to idle it down you give it a couple of gooses and then all of a sudden it comes right back up again. You're like, what the heck? I just adjusted it. That's the sign of an air leak. Um, if you turn the bike on its side as it's running, like tip it back and forth. If you tip a bike back and forth like this, um, when you're sitting on the bike, you lean the bike to one side or the other and it changes. That's a sign of a crankshaft seal. If your bike is, um, what do you call it there? Running and you see between the cylinder head and the um the jug if you're looking at your bike when you're walking around your bike and you see a lot of oily soot right up in here where the head gasket would go chances are you have a leaky head gasket and that right there can cause a lean condition or you have a bad head gasket so you want to check for that um, and that would be normally all the way around. Or if you see it in just one corner, that means that head bolt right there is loose. If it was right here, there, right here, this head bolt is loose. And then you're going to have to retorque them. Um, so, a couple of tips for you. You know, just, just when, you're doing, when you're walking around your bike, what you're looking for in an overheat condition is really dirty thins with thick soot. You know, like the dirt is turned to soot right in there. You want to check your heat range, you want to make sure your coolant fins are clean, and you want to check for an oil right up, right between with the jug and the head, or if you're in the UK, a cylinder barrel and the cylinder head meet. They'll be right up in there. So you want to check that, make sure that you're not, um, you don't have no liquid, no oil, no soot in between those two. It should be dry and clean. So there's that, and let's see. And looking at a head gasket, how can you tell if a head gasket is um, burnt up or not? There's a, um, if you're looking at the head gasket, wish I had one to uh, show you guys. I'll grab one for you right here. I got a used one. I always keep my used head gaskets because they, uh, they come in great for gasket scrapers. This is a good head gasket. There's no, there's like the black right here, but what you would see is you'd see a black trail it'd be black it'd be burnt like it, it would have like the ash on it and you would see a trail coming off to where the gasket's blown and typically what you'd see like say you say oil here and you pull the gasket off you'd see the trail right on the gasket itself so and you can see it on either side like this one here 
And you see this right here was starting to blow. You can see right there, see it was dark. And you can't wipe it off with your finger. That's a blown head gasket right there. You shouldn't see it. It should look like this all the way around. Okay? So, if you're trying to find a leak, that right there is a leak. And that's pretty much all I got for you guys for tonight. Just wanted to share with you guys some tips and tricks of, well, my tip and trick would be the intake boot and then what to look for on your overheat condition on your bike. And if your bike has low compression, another way to find out these right here is using an, um, a, what do you call it here, a compression gauge and you will find that you have very low compression. Probably not enough to start it. You'll probably be, um, this particular one right here was right around uh, between 50 and 60 PSI. This one right here had like 30. I mean, it didn't have much. You know, at that point, you know, you got to pull the head off. And uh, that's it. So for those of you who, um, we call it, they don't know what a compression gauge is or don't know how to use one, um, you would screw it into your cylinder head. And uh, you would screw it into the cylinder head. And then uh, do your compression test with, by kicking the engine over. So to do a compression test on these, you will need a compression gauge. And the adapter to go into the cylinder head. So you basically just screw this into the bike, into the cylinder head. You can do two compression tests. One when it's cold, one after it's warmed up, if you are so lucky to do that. Then your, uh, let me just adjust you guys up here a little bit more. Just get your adapter. That snaps onto there. Then you release all the pressure right from that button right there and you hold it. Then with one hand you have your foot, you put your hand, you shut the ignition off. Turn your throttle all the way open, full throttle. And you're going to kick it over five or six you know, five or six times. And then do your compression reading from there. So I'm not going to give you the specs on that. Only because different year making models have different specs. But um, I find anything over 90 will start. So, but is is considered low. 150 or above is considered good. And you can get your... Uh, for those of you who have different bikes, I know like mine has the, um, what do you call it there? My cylinder head is the high compression head and requires a longer reach spark plug. So make sure you check the tip of your spark plug to match the tip of your compression gauge. Because there are different gauges. So what I'm saying is if your bike requires a short plug and you use this in there, you could cause engine damage. So, there's a tip for you right there. Get yourself a good quality compression tester, and uh, you can often rent them out at auto pot stores, if you don't have one. And make sure you always take care of it, because it is a precision instrument. This one right here does everything from the little tiny spark plugs to the big giant Ford plugs. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. This one right here is made by Craftsman and is a very high quality unit. I absolutely love this thing. I use it, it's got all the different adapters and um, even comes with little extra valves to change and the tool will change it. And a nice hard carrying case. So, that's the, um, you'll notice I use a lot of Craftsman stuff. I try to use tools that you guys, that's available right to you guys, that you guys can pretty much get anywhere. And the reason for that is if I start using all kinds of fancy equipment that's not available to anybody, well, then how are you guys going to do it at your houses? So, that pretty much it concludes tonight, um, just about the overheating. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, by all means, send them my way. If you pull your piston out, my recommendations to you... Go online and type in um, two-stroke piston chart, okay? And you'll see something like this right here. 
where it basically tells you all the different problems you could possibly have and it gives location on like on the piston they give you the piston location like this right here is going to tell you uh top you know and then it's this condition and it explains how it looks and then it'll tell you the problem and cause okay and these type of diagnostic charts may not be a hundred percent on to what you're doing but they're going to point you in the right direction okay and that right there is always a good help so if you can get a point in the right direction that's kind of where you want to be you know so just make sure that when you're uh doing these things you know just just do your you walk around check for oil check for um dirt that's your first step check your heat range um different things to look for and obviously use my videos as a reference um make sure your carburetor is not running too lean no uh, no leaks dirt and oil and um, that's pretty much it so dirt and oil carburetor. i'm just going over this one more time with you guys um air leaks you know you how do you find an air leak i'll tell you the quickest way to find a leak take a can of carburetor cleaner and spray it on the motor so, like, say you think it's the, your base gasket, okay? You see that base gasket? Say you think it's the base gasket. You can take a can of carburetor cleaner. For all intents and purposes, we're going to pretend that this, this water is carburetor cleaner. And you're just going to spray it while the engine's running. You're going to spray it around the bottom, and you're going to see if the engine changes its tone. If there's a leak, depending upon if it's too rich or too lean, the engine will either cut out or it'll speed up. Okay, if it does either one, that's your leak. You can do that with your head gasket. Spray it around there. Don't do it when it's really, really hot. You know, like start it up, and then do it. You know, psh, okay, not no change. Psh, wham, okay, I got a leak over here. That's how you can find a leak. Um, that's one way of doing it. Same thing with your. Uh, make sure your unit's all sealed. You can spray it around there. Make sure you see if you're getting any uh, vacuum leaks those those type of things are very very important and also too i find and this is very very common the carburetor is loose if your carburetor is loose you take it off you can go jiggle back and forth tighten up your clamp that's most likely your problem the two common problems i found is the intake is loose and the head's loose these heads are only torqued to 16 foot pounds so after heavy riding all day in trails and heating up and cooling down they can loosen up on you. They're not lock bolts. They are lock nuts. They're just regular nuts. And they can shock loose. They can vibrate loose. So check and make sure they're torqued to 16 foot pounds. And that's clear across the board. All the bikes. Make sure you get no soot oil here. On, on, all the way around. And um, don't forget to check the exhaust tip. This is another very common problem why these things overheat is this tip right here slides out and you can clean it but i'm gonna do a video on cleaning these things after because i have to clean this one so i'm gonna show you guys how to clean these how i clean them and um you'll see how bad it is you're gonna be like what i gotta check my bike so well that's all i have for you guys for tonight thank you guys for watching by all means questions tips tricks um whatever you guys have if you guys have any information that i may not by all means please comment and share them Heat ranges, dark there, um, low ash, bad oil, too lean or foreign objects in your uh, engine, maybe dirt, maybe you didn't have your cover on, you, you went to a sandy area and picked up some dirt, that'll cause that. Run the engine too lean and too hard, or too, uh, too high RPMs, but too long, will also do that. And typically, if it's really, really lean, you'll have like a lot more scoring down here. So this right here... That's really a, a just a really bad, bad, bad day right there. So, that's all I got. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe.